and back here. So yeah, Zeratul uh, eventually decided that you know the the only choice was to fight. Like even if the Zerg were wiping out billions of people, it's like he's trading that for being complacent in the enslavement of trillions of lives. So yeah, that was that was the choice he made, and that kind of led us to the next chapter. Uh, so at this point we have to ask if all you ever know in tragedy, if all you've ever known is tragedy, by its very definition, at what point does that simply become life and no longer a tragedy by, uh, by the fact that it's not a singular event. So the Zerg were gone, and with it should have come a welcome rest. You know, even though he didn't side with legacy or anything like that, like his his greatest foe was vanquished and it seemed like it was time to like maybe sort out your life and see what you could go from there. But as we all know in real world, that's not exactly the way things work. And uh, soon the hunt was on, and Legacy was apparently out there hunting down and killing all the people who didn't side with him. And part of that, I guess, was a little bit of there was a little bit of solace in that. Maybe he right made the right choice because, like, think about it this way: like, if you're attacked by a wild animal, uh, you realize that that attack is probably a combination of like instincts and uh, survival mechanisms. Whereas, like, if you're attacked by like a fellow man, there's a lot more that can go into it. Like, there's room for uh, malice or uh, personal desires, ill content, but there's also room for like mercy or forgiveness and stuff like that. And Legacy obviously wasn't about those, those latter two, which kind of gave a little credence to the choice that uh, Zeratul made, at least in his mind, where, you know, Legacy was not a good guy. Like, he's out there hunting and killing down. He's not giving second chances or anything like that. Like, he's not saying, you know, like, like there's, there's, room in humanity, at least, like humanity in the broader alien sense for compassion and stuff like that. You know, Legacy wasn't about that. So, so yeah, the Zer Zeratul was, was kind of confident that he made the right choice, but, you know, again, that also leads him back to running from his life and seeing, you know, everyone that he knows and cares for being hunted down and killed. So, you know, out of the frying pan into the fryer kind of thing. Uh, so from there like they I can't remember the exact uh, chain of events but he got I think Drath was Drew's character's name and him and Zeratul played together a lot so their stories were intertwined but we got matched up with I think like six people and we were all decently talented people I won't say powerful we were talented uh, you know, with a wide array of abilities. One of our stronger members was this dude, Alex. Uh, he was the cosmic guy, I said, who was like this amazing cosmic healer, like cosmic level healing. He harnessed cosmic energy to do that. And uh, there was this redheaded Saiyan chick who Zeratul eventually had a thing for, and she was also eventually killed because, of course, she was. Uh, I can't remember. I said I don't remember a lot of details about her. I just remember he cared for her. I don't think there was anything quite romantic at that point, but it was definitely like the starting to develop those feelings, which was very foreign for this character who had known nothing but like death and destruction his entire life. But like I said, it it, it was funny because they were uh, what this group of people was set out to do is it wasn't to stop legacy directly. They were basically this, given this impossible challenge to stop uh, Legacy, or not Legacy, uh, Stargazer, who is usually shortened to Gazer, Harold, this insanely powerful psychic, this uh, this wind manipulating chicken, I think like one or two other people. And their job was if they could stop them from doing something, then it would provide like this moment in time where someone else would potentially be able to stop Legacy. Like this, it was like a kind of a chain reaction kind of thing. The details were a little skim, but it was one of those ones where you're also being hunted down and killed by Legacy's minions at that point. So we were basically constantly on the run and trying to train up to to be able to like face off in this one of a million counter and like Harold I think you guys know about and I think 
he got a little bit weaker from what Karee said, but like I think this was like prime Harold. Like this is sort of the ancient's Harold who was everything and anything. And Stargazer is like potentially like he's definitely planet destroying level, and I want to say he might have been like near galaxy destroying level. Like he might have been able to destroy stars at this point. So he was pretty much everything, and why Zeratul was against him, I don't know. But like I guess Alex was supposed to tackle a uh, gazer but alex was like alex was good alex was nice but he wasn't that nice i don't think so like i said we were we were outclassed uh, by a pretty wide margin but you know that's kind of uh, par for the course as far as zeratul went like you know it was he was one man trying to warm worlds against an incoming army he's you know one lowly <laughs> protoss slinger and hybrid trying to stop like the greater machinations of this guy who's murdering half the universe or whatever however many people you know went against him but uh yeah it was i mean it gave him a little bit of solace to have this like reprieve where he actually got to know some people and uh you know it wasn't just like this experience of meeting them finding a little bit about them and then watching them die horribly before his eyes but uh so if that wasn't enough uh then we kind of get to the inevitable which is Look at the conclusion of his story, as you would imagine, but uh, it you know it comes with some sour notes. Uh, so if it wasn't enough to be like insanely outclassed by the likes of Harold and Stargazer, and supposedly like, one of the most powerful psychics out there in existence, to the point where like they could reshape the reality of a planet to like to to get you to see what they wanted to see, and it's like how do you even you know Zeratul was like a decent psychic, but like that's like putting uh, the guy who can stick spoons to his body up against Magneto for magnetism. It's just like, they're not even in the same class. So if that wasn't impossible enough, uh, somehow her, uh, Legacy gets a DM minion to start working for him. And the part that always made me think back on this is like, it was described to me as a DM minion. I don't think the guy introduced himself as a DM minion, because one, how would an NPC know about a DM minion? Like, yeah, I don't feel like that'd be something... I felt like DM minions are very strictly player driven. So like to have them be introduced by the DM as a as a DM minion, it's that kind of adds a whole new dimension to it. Like, you know, the Zerg were early on like they, you know, they could bleed, they lived, they died, they destroyed everything like that, but like they were this tangible force of nature that was just so overwhelming that you know, they they did their thing like uh Harold and Stargazer, like, were insanely powerful. Like, they, you know, they obviously shattered your expectations of reality and what, what can be accomplished as, a, as an individual, but they still existed within the realm of reality. Like, Legacy, Legacy's a little iffy. I mean, yeah, he was he was apparently more powerful than, like, Gazer and all these people, but, like, to, to get control of the entire universe, that's pretty huge. But even then, like, Legacy is probably still bound by laws of the game and everything like that. Like, is a minion even bound by those things? Like, can a minion lose? Like, can a minion even fail its mission? Like, uh, like, if, if, uh, if you're getting punished by the DM and he sends a minion after you, it's like, can you, like, can you even really, like, resist or anything like that? Like, how inevitable is this outcome? So, assuming that the minion wasn't, like, direct, like, maybe, like, minions have chill time when they're not, like, serving the DM, like, are they bound by any kind of laws and generations? Can they lose? Can they bleed? Can they even die? Like, no one knows this kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, so that's what's chasing Zeratul now. Like, uh, and it's, like I said, it's just kind of this, this never-ending story of something, this inevitable force chasing him. And, you know, it started out as, like, these ravenous creatures, and it just kind of escalated to there to the point where it's a DM minion. And uh, Zeratul, like, helps his friends get away. Like, that's that's what he does. Like, he travels across planets. He can bounce between, like, almost insurmountable distances with the blink of an eye and almost no effort. So he was pretty... That was pretty nuts when it came to that. But he eventually started to run out of places to run to and hide. Like, he could... He would have to, like, uh, to get... He could go back to, like, any place, like, he was instantly. Like, that's the greatest way to put distance between them. But then the minion started to... Because it's a minion. Like, of course, like, the minion knows where Zeratul's been and everything like that. So I guess he started to predict where Zeratul was going and started to show up faster and we had less of a reprieve. So at this point, I feel like we lost some people. Like, I know the redhead Saiyan chick was either lost or killed at this point, And it was down to Drath, 
Zeratul and Alex. And, like, that was what was left to the squad. So it's like, we already failed our mission. Like, there's no way we can take out uh, Stargazer and all that. Like, we, it was already a one in a million shot. And it was like, that was if we had everyone and everything like that. It's like, there was just no hope now at this point. But, so the minion is, uh, is, is cornering us. And, uh, and eventually it does corner us. And it's like, it's kind of that, that last moment thing. And I remember as Zeratul, I was faced with the decision is, do we succumb to the inevitable or do we stand and fight? And it's not standing to fight to win. It's not standing to fight to like come out of this victorious. It's this is giving it everything that you ever were and everything that you ever will be. This is like character death, like permit death, like no no overworld or anything like that. And it's just like giving everything that you can. And it's not even the hope to win. Like you don't you're not gonna beat a minion. Like the only hope that I that I garnered from this was that maybe it would like put a dent in his armor, a crack, like this small infinitesimally small thing that one day could be exploited by one of the last survivors still being hunted down by legacy that maybe maybe in this moment that we could uh that Zeratul could make his difference that he could uh you know impact this life and give someone else a chance for the life that he never got to live like one that was you know somewhat free of death and destruction of constantly being hunted and you know, across worlds and galaxies and everything like that. But uh, I think kind of the ultimate tragedy in the end was more for me as a player than less for the character because the character ceased to exist. He gave up all his life force to basically try to stop this minion, like to, to try to destroy it. And the real thing was, is uh, as a character, I never knew the, the outcome of what happened. I don't know if he succeeded, if if he actually killed the minion, which I doubt he did, but if he like if he even dented the minion, if the minion just shrugged it off and then went on to get like hunt down the next person, or if even worse than that, like the fact that you know Draft and I were decently powerful, but like Alex is one of those everything type people. Like if Alex, like I think Alex sacrificed himself with us. It was kind of hard to tell. Like Alex was giving it his all, but I don't know if he was giving it his life force or if NPCs can give life force. But, uh, like, if Alex sacrificed himself because of Zeratul's actions, that that just hurt the cause even more by taking out such a powerful ally in that moment of sacrifice. Like, if maybe the minion could be reasoned with or something like that, which I doubt it could. I mean, it's a minion. But, yeah, like, that was kind of one of the things that stuck with me over the years is I don't know if in the end that that sacrifice actually meant anything or if it actually hurt the cause even more or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, just Karee's post about tragedy really got me thinking about, like, the tragedy that was Zeratul's life. And, you know, if your entire life is, like, one tragedy after another, if it's, like, this constant download of destruction and dismay and, like, seeing everything that you know die and then things that you barely know die and then, like, people that you get to know and then watching them die. It's just, like, reading his list kind of brought back some memories and I was like, oh, man, that was pretty rough. But uh, hopefully this kind of fills in some of the stuff Time Year was asking for. Like I said, I wish I could give you more details. Uh, it's been over a decade since I played the character, but uh, that was just a little synopsis of his life. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it.